I'm talking today with Professor Helena Teed, who is the Executive Director of the Monash Partners Academic Health Sciences Centre and is also Professor of Women's Health at Monash Uni. Helena, thank you for your time. Thank you, Kate. You've written a scary, scary article. Tell us a little bit about what, how bad the situation is. So it's always good to have a burning platform, Kate. <laughs> yes. And we've definitely got a burning platform in this space. So I, I work in women's health primarily and especially in public health and prevention. And it's very clear that in Australia we now have a scenario where our young women especially are putting on more weight um, faster than anybody else. Not just our past generations, yep. but any group in the population. We have a, a wonderful resource, which is a government funded study called the Australian Longitudinal Women's Health Study. Yep. And they have three cohorts and they've had 15 years of longitudinal follow up and 14,000 women each group. And they've now taken on a young cohort at 18. And if you look at the data from that, it's really quite scary. Yeah. So women are less and less active, um, eating more and more. Not necessarily even eating a McDonald's or Kentucky Fried Chicken. We're all just eating more yep. and doing less. And that little bit of imbalance over time means that Australian women are putting on weight year after year. So the average at a population level is 700 grams to a kilo a year, which doesn't sound much, but that's you know seven to 10 kilos every decade. Yeah. And then each time we have a pregnancy, we put on, put on quite a bit and we don't tend to lose it. So the more pregnancies, the more gain. And so we get into this vicious cycle that the weight gain just builds and builds. And so we find that the majority of adult women are in fact overweight or obese. Yep. So in fact, less than 40% of us are in the healthy weight range. And that whole phenomenon is escalating. So it's starting younger and it's growing faster. One of the challenges really is that once obesity is established, managing it is really difficult. It's mm -hmm. really difficult for the individuals affected. It's also very difficult for the system because lifestyle therapy alone, and I hate to admit it because I'm a public health advocate, but lifestyle therapy alone is really um, not sustainable for most people. Yep. So the evidence largely shows that the vast majority of people who are once they're obese and really putting effort into lifestyle are simply on a merry-go-round of um, yep. ups and downs. And we often end up needing to revert to additional medical therapy, at least now there are effective options, or even more so surgery. Yep. And the scary thing is with 20% or more of the population in that category, actually quite a bit more, that's just not feasible for our health system to fund that sort of intensity, yeah. let alone all the complications that occur because of it. So the obvious solution has to be that we start in a prevention mode. So prevention is doing less for more yep, yep. earlier. But in this case, given that we know treatment doesn't work very effectively, we really have to get into prevention. And because nearly everybody is heading in the right direction, it's critical. So my particular area is in women's health, partly because that's my area of specialty, but also partly because really that determines the health of the next generation. Right. Right. So what are the repercussions reproductively, fertility-wise, of obesity? Yeah, so there are multiple repercussions, yep. and it's in a young age group. So what we know, for example, is that as our young women are getting a lot more overweight, that about well, more than 50%, up to close to 60% of young women going into pregnancy are overweight or obese at the time they conceive. And then throughout the pregnancy, we know 60% of them will gain more weight than is recommended. And many of them will retain that. That then sets them up for starting the next pregnancy at a higher weight and off we go again, and significantly increasing obesity. So this is not a small proportion. This is more than half. Yeah. And if more than half of us are struggling with that, there's something system-wide that's a problem. It's just making it too hard for us to be healthy. And, and I have to say that it, a great failing at the moment, which is really disappointing in Australia, is that we have not had brave government yeah. who have actually stood up and helped us to be healthy. I don't believe there's a, a, a single talk I've ever given, even amongst you know, business women's groups who are very well educated and, and um, quite affluent, right to community groups out in regional areas. They are all struggling with keeping themselves healthy and their families healthy. It's too hard. Yeah. So we need to do things to help them and they can't be tokenistic gestures. Yeah. So to come back to some of those figures that you were talking about that are frightening, not only are most of us getting too overweight before we conceive and most of us gaining too much in pregnancy, but it's having more and more of us are having effects of that on our health. Yeah. So our health is critical for the women, but the next generation I'll come to in a moment is equally scary. So the women themselves, uh, when they're overweight, even at a young age, they've got more back pain, they've got more knee pain, 
they're then less active, putty, part of that vicious cycle. And that affects their quality of life and other areas. They have more mood challenges, depression and anxiety. And that again, self-esteem, body image, all those sorts of things, even feminine identity, all those things are affected by this. Um, then we have the, the clinical, if you like, effect. So there's a very big increase in conditions like polycystic ovary syndrome. Yep. That condition causes really early onset diabetes, uh, diabetes in pregnancy, much higher rate, diabetes very soon after pregnancy, increased cardiovascular risk factors and increased cardiovascular disease. But it also has increased psychological complications, yeah. much more unhealthy pregnancies, and the big feature of it is the infertility. Yeah. So up to 80% of women with this condition in Australia need assistance with fertility. That is a massive psychological relationship health burden, financial um, cost. The other conditions that are really important are gestational diabetes. Yep. So again, we're getting up to one in five women. This is not uncommon. And the impact of that <coughs> on the pregnancy and on the mum are quite substantial. We have a whole range of other conditions that are also related to this. So what we're seeing is a, just a gradual creep back of the increased rate of weight gain, the increased body weight, and it's getting earlier and earlier. And then what happens is it sets us up for intergenerational problems. Mm. So if we look at the animal data, which is really, really scary, what we know is the weight of the mother at conception yes. determines the health of the next generation. Now we know that in human studies too. Yeah. So if mum's very overweight when she gets pregnant, that child will have health implications. And this is at two and three and nine years old. Yeah. Um, now if you look at that in animal studies, that effect lasts three generations. Oh. So we are really, we really need to do something about this. What does it do for the fetus and, and, and also for the birth process? Um, does the, it... the complications in pregnancy in general, so maternal, fetal and birth, are all worse yeah, in yeah. mums who are, over, who are overweight and in mums who put on too much weight in pregnancy and right. they work independently. So if you're overweight to start with, that gives you problems. If you're overweight and you put on excess weight, that gives you problems. Even if you're a normal weight and you put on excess weight, it gives you problems. And if you add gestational diabetes on top of that, all I can say is I think our obstetricians these days are very brave because we got to very good <laughs> maternal and child health yeah. you know, in terms of birth and now we're getting this whole revolution of ill health in pregnancy um, and much more high risk pregnancies because of the, the lifestyle yeah. limits. So some of the work we've done in this area has been more recently to establish what is, simple questions like what is the, the ways we could help people to prevent weight gain and we've been involved in a whole series of large scale studies that have done really pragmatic things. So I'm not interested in developing programs that nobody can use. Yeah. So we start from the outset about what women need, how we can help develop that, um, the range of funders from philanthropy to NHMRC. And so these studies have started, for example, targeting mothers and schools at drop off and pick up time. Cool. So yeah. Really simple, low intensity. We do not sit there and preach about what people should eat and how much exercise they should do. Most people know that. What we do is say, we all know what we need to do. How can we help you with the sorts of skills and strategies to be able to be a bit healthier? We're not aiming for weight loss in any of these studies. We're aiming for prevention of gain. So it's small changes. The dietitian who's had a lot to do with this work, um, uh, Associate Professor Kate Lombard, mm. actually, you know, famous last words were, if we could just get Australia to stop having a biscuit with their morning tea, we would all <laughs> stop putting on weight. And I think that's the message. Yeah. Prevention is small changes, small and consistent. Don't splurge when you go on holidays. Don't go over the top of Christmas and Easter. You know, just it's just that little bit yep. less or that little bit more activity. You know, if we actually all got rid of all the misinformation and rubbish that people are spending their money on, it's yeah. about a very simple healthy plates and pyramids we learned in school, but no one makes any money out of that, Kate. Yeah. So if we come back to simple principles, how do we support girls, women, mums, families, yeah. to have those healthy programs? How do we get simple messages? Yeah. We have an exceptional public health track record. It's not just in smoking. Well, yeah. And we use the basic recipe of educating the educated who can manage, of incentivizing and supporting those who need a bit of help, yeah. and of regulating those who just really can't, you know, it's really difficult to manage. Yeah. We've not applied that simple principle to other things. We've done it with um, speeding. Yeah. We've yeah. got our speeding rates down with car seats, with seat belts, yeah. with smoking. Bike helmets. Yep, bike helmets. We do it, but for some reason with food, we could definitely do more. And I personally think this is never gonna happen without community engagement and demand. So the answer to your question is, 
incredibly disappointing we haven't done it, yeah. especially in a country with a proud history. We There's no excuse. We need to do it. There's statements from the College of Physicians. There's yeah. public health, health promotion evidence. There is no shortage of evidence, but it requires a brave government. And indeed, we've just done a collaboration with um, 31 other groups around the world who've done similar work. That work's about to be published, showing that it's quite simple and easy to prevent that excess weight gain in pregnancy by implementing it into routine antenatal care. Um, and so those sorts of things are actually quite easy to do. And then we're missing <coughs> the opportunity for, for prevention. As doctors and clinicians, we need to, when we see young women, think about asking them about their lifestyle, monitor their weight, get them to monitor their own weight, send them to the, you know, the things that are available, that, um, really good initiatives to sign up, simple messages, we need to get people away from all of the rubbish out there about this is the latest diet, spending a lot of money on, on things like that. If there was a single diet, we would all be on it. Exactly. So my message, Kate, is just remember that most of that is rubbish, that it's the simple things that matter, the two fruits, the five veggies, a little bit of extra walking. And if you can do something small, feel great about that. Yeah. It's all about how we can help each other. And I'd love to see some community action that would actually drive action from government to make it easier for us um, and to work with industry if they were partner but to make it easier for us as women as mums as Australians to live a healthier life thanks for your time thank you